Right, today I'm doing rapid transit. It's uh, This is part of the standard game. I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, this is one of the trains that I think it was one of the first ones I tried a tutorial on. Uh, and uh, I forgot how we got to get it going. So I had to deal with this scenario three times because I just kept the brakes on this train uh, quite a bit different to... The other trains that I've uh, that I've been on, in yeah, the little beeper there. I can't remember what that's for. But eventually, I went. I, I you know, because I failed, I went back and did the tutorial again. And there was like a, a parking brake that I'd missed, but it did it did work. And all of a sudden, I couldn't get the train to move. And I think I've actually understood why that is. I don't think it was anything to do with the parking brake. I think it's the way that they... You've got a brake and a throttle in one lever. Uh, and they're combined. So on, if you're using the controller... Uh, it's it, it doesn't use the brake side. It uses just the throttle, you see. So you don't use the brake. It, does that make any sense? You don't have to use the left and left trigger and left bumper button. It's all on the right trigger and right bumper button. So it's a bit like an aircraft throttle. But combined with brakes. <laughs> so when you get it to zero, you've got no throttle and no braking, so you'd be coasting. And when when you when you then if you can imagine you're pulling the stick back towards yourself, that, that starts applying the brakes. And it, it, I ended up getting used to it, and I could stop a lot more accurate. It was a bit, a bit more like being in a car rather than a train, because the the other trains I've driven, once you get some braking force applied, it seems to build up fairly slowly, and then you get the sort of full braking force, full retardation of your speed, uh, and then when you want to stop going slower. If that makes any sense. Stop going slow. Yeah, that does make sense. Uh, you know, so that you can maintain the speed that you've got. When you come off the brakes, there's a massive delay normally, and you can, you'll can you end up stopping, you know, because the air brakes take some time to lose the pressure or gain the pressure, whichever it is, and uh, and release the actual brakes. So this, this one is different. Uh, it does work really nicely once you get used to it. But it's very easy to be sat there, unable to move, wondering wondering why it's, the train's just sitting there. And I, I, I think I've I think I've sussed out what the uh, what the trick to that is. That alarm's normal. So if you look carefully, uh, that one that that's uh, the. The dial at the bottom there on the head-up display, the one that's at five o'clock, sort of bottom one, uh, watch the pressure on that, because that's the one you've got to watch out for. Once you get the throttle down to zero, I mean, right, when you go through the stopping procedure, which I'll talk you through before you, before I get to the next stop, you're approaching it, then you've got your brakes on, and you stop where you want to do, and then you leave the brakes applied, open your doors, let your passengers on, which you don't get much time on this map to go walking around like I normally do. Uh, oh look, the blind works. So you uh, you sort of get the go from the game, close your doors, and then what you do is you, you, you use the throttle, so you use the right trigger on the uh, Xbox control to set your throttle brake to zero like there you see throttle brake is now zero and now I've got 20% power 25 I can't read it it's 35% 40% now full parish so w the trick the trick is is to get it to zero and watch the watch the uh, indicator at, at the sort of five o'clock on that dial on your heads up display there and watch the brake pressure and and the brake pressure goes uh, clockwise and it leaves it leaves a little bit of a 
a, a little bit of brake pressure left and uh, and then what you do is you put the throttle up to 5% which is basically one, one, one sort of press on the trigger and then you lay the brakes releasing uh, and then you can apply more power and start going so the, the throttle has, has got sort of like a, it must have a, a rollback safety or something like that you know keeps the brake applied until you've got power on so that the train's going to go where you want, want not what where, where gravity wants it to go I hope that made some sense to you it's going to be difficult to see on a phone so when when uh, when I'm ready to move off what I'm going to do is the magic of editing because I'm so incredibly clever and considerate I'll do it like a picture in picture thing where you can see the uh, the little heads up display that has got your speed and all that on you just have to wait a little bit uh, yeah you don't get really much time to, to wander around in this uh, in this scenario I did find one collectible somewhere a, a, a map but I don't I don't really collect them I, I normally only do that because of, with a view to people watching it if you know what I mean so the, I'm about to set off so I'm going to put the picture in picture at the top left hand corner and it'll zoom it in just have to lock these so then pay attention to the throttle that I put to 5% after it's been zero you can hear the air throttles at zero now 5% see the thing move then the dial that was at 5 o'clock if that makes any sense to you and there that's it you see that gave me so much problem if you just sort of mash the, th mash the throttle to set off you'll just sit there it won't release the brakes I don't know why that is I assume it's some kind of safety system and for some reason the, the graphics look a little bit better uh, the town and that looks better I did uh, I did uh, I did the big freight train the big American that CSX GP 40 I think it is fantastic train I mean I'm not really into trains but I can appreciate engineering and uh, that, that thing's a monster but when you're driving through I think it's New York I'm sure it's New York it, it doesn't look as good as this and it's not because New York's any worse it's just they, they just don't seem to have done a good as good a job as they have on this I mean, it's still got its usual problems, you know, the blurring that I keep complaining about, and and the uh, just I don't know. Some of it's just not not right about the the graphics. It always just looks blurry. Uh, it looks perfectly fine when on 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 the captures. It's just as you're playing it, it don't look it don't look as good. I'll tell you what, though, this German graffiti is not as good as American. It might look colourful, but it's not. It's just not as good. It's a copycat. Everyone wants to be American. Yeah, you see, the, the stops come thick and fast on this. It depends what sort of play you are, you see, I guess, as, as to whether you're going to enjoy this. I don't particularly enjoy this, but I do like the way that the brakes work. I don't know if you've noticed, I've been getting quite accurate with where the, this train's stopping. And there is some portions where, where you actually go underground. If you were looking at the intro and didn't just skip to where I'm drawn in on, you, you, you sort of the intro is like a what's coming in the video type of thing. Normally, I do a bit of talking over that, but it's it's hard. It, it can take a long time to do with them intros, believe it or not. And uh, yeah, that that took me an hour. That that one without me even talking. Then you got to get all your levels of your sound and all that right. Where am I going to say something? Blah blah blah. But I did enjoy that uh, that big freight train driving that. Yeah, the little alarm. They get little alarms here and all sorts of stuff. I was quite surprised when this train went underground. I 
I think I got quite a lot of XP by under this scenario as well. It sounds like <laughs> compared to other trains I've been, especially at British ones, this is like a this is like a starship, isn't it? Like Star Trek. Reverse the polarity, Scotty. Yes. We've had some snow, unusually, in this country. And I'm still having problems with my lug holes, my ears. So if the sound's not, uh, if the sound's not up to standard, it's because I'm pretty much half deaf. That's been an ongoing thing for quite a while now. Yeah, beep, beep, beep. I can't remember if I get out of the train there. Yeah. I do get out of the train in a couple of places, but I could be getting mixed up because, like I said, I did this scenario three, no, was it four times before I sussed out how he got to, how he got to use the brakes. Or not use the brakes. But I've got it pretty much sussed there. Eh? I even went back and did the tutorial, like I said, in, uh, it wasn't that helpful, to be honest with you. <laughs> You know you can actually get a manual for this as well. Oh, and while I remember, there's uh, there's been an update for this game, but I can't actually tell what the update actually did. I might I might put it in my next video. You know, like the screen on on it, like a s screenshot of the. Uh, I was going to do it in this one, but I forgot it's too late now. It needs to be at the beginning, doesn't it? Because you don't want to put it in there and people are going, well, where is it? You get, you get some funny comments on these videos. I don't know if you noticed, if you've been watching my videos, I do, uh, I put quite a lot of effort into doing intros and stuff like that. I just like doing it. Anyway, so, uh, some kid <laughs> left a comment on one of them. Uh, says, I gave you, a, it was basically, I gave you a thumbs up for your video, then I realised you'd put the wrong music on it. <laughs> so I took the thumbs down, I took the thumbs up off it. So I left him a reply saying, well, thank, you know, thanks for letting me efforts not go unwasted. Or, or wasted, whichever it was, something, something like that. But I didn't want to. I didn't want to lay into him. It was one of my farming simulator ones. What what I've done on that is I've used, I've used some copyright clear music and and used their their intro graphics, but sort of mixed them up a little bit and put different music on it. I even made the wind effects and and uh, there's a bit where there's this truck driving and I've made it sound like you can hear the truck the music coming out of the truck with the guy driving it. I went to a hell of a lot of trouble and the kid just goes, no, you've got wrong music on. I'm thumb, thumbing it down or whatever. Cheers, kid. He was obviously a kid. I'm judging by his profile picture. This is why you got to be careful when you're online. I remember you know, when I first started on Xbox Live, we all used to play PGR and it was even pre-Call of Duty. And pre Battlefield, I think Battlefield and Call of Duty were things that possibly had been on. That's the horn, isn't it awful? Oh, it's like a clown thing, isn't it? It's like a clown tooter or something you get in a Christmas cracker. Yeah, I'm getting ahead of steam up here now at 75 mile an hour. Yeah, I was talking about when 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 I first got an Xbox Live, and everyone used to talk to each other, and and you you could have a great laugh. But you get some idiots as well, you know, crashing into in Project Gotham Racing. It was a great game, that. And then, then Forza came out, and I fell in love with that. And there were a few games that were motorbike games, and then they put motorbikes in PGR, didn't they? But it was great. I used to play it with an American guy. that I, I played with him for years, and he suddenly just disappeared. Uh don't really know why I'm possibly prison or dead. 
judging by his attitude, but we had such a great laugh. But he used to just lay into kids. He'd be saying things, I mean, you could tell they were kids as well, and, you know, we're not kids, we were, you know, in his, in his sort of forties, basically. <laughs> and, uh, and we're just, you know, playing, playing like a bunch of kids. Anyway, he, he was a pretty bad loser, and, uh, he didn't like losing, he, he threw a strop, but I, I really liked him, we, we had such a laugh. And then when, uh, just I used to wear him just slagging some of the kids off, I can't tell you some of the things he said, but one of them he was saying, I bet you're a fat kid, aren't you, I can tell by the way you're breathing. <laughs> and the kids going, no, no, it, it was just not, it, it just wasn't right. I did. I did tell him at the time you shouldn't you shouldn't be saying things like that to kids. But uh, he he just let him, but his emotions get the better of him. And uh, anyway, I think it was Call of Duty was one of the first shoot Call of Duty in Rainbow Six, Rainbow Six Vegas. I think it was. That was a good shoot of that. But you could get trapped in the spawn, and then Joe would end up going ape <laughs> I don't know how many controllers he went through smashing them and I've known him break you know like snap game discs in half yeah we had some great games and, and everyone used to play and everyone were on mic and a lot of times it didn't get nasty we had a great laugh like I remember that I think Call of Duty and it was a World War 2 one the first ones it had been like 2006 or something like that maybe 2007 i can't remember before battlefield bad company came out and and we had such a laugh there were guys obviously drunk playing and we, we were laughing as heads off you know the team the team chat everyone could talk to each other not like it is now you you go into battlefield and you hardly hear anyone do you and this new battlefield's just appalling and I, i've played it once Luckily, I didn't pay a full price for it. I only paid thirty pounds for it, but it's absolutely appalling. The worst battlefield ever. I overshoot here quite badly, <laughs> but I, I don't get punished for it too badly. I lose out on XP, but I deserve that. I were really mortary when I, while I'm reminiscing about uh, Call of Duty. They've done them to death, haven't they? Them games. Way, way too many of them, too often. It's like FIFA every single year. It's just a reskin, isn't it? And they're doing the same with Forza now, aren't they? It's one one year it's Forza, next year it's Forza Horizon. And they've done some okay with that game as well. The way they've uh, they've, they've ruined standard Forza. And, and to be honest with you, Forza Horizon, I've always thought has just been a bit too arcadey for my liking. And it's all that stupid hype I guess it might work for younger people but it just seems extremely immature to me and I'm sure if you were probably 20 years and under you're going to find it quite immature and, and quite insulting in some ways is 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 this sort of attitude of the you know they, they, they sort of dumb the game down like they're talking down to you it's like when you listen to Major Nelson doing his This Week on Xbox I guess he's just trying to do the best he can, but it just seems a bit patronising. You know, like he's talking down all the time to, to you. It might just be how he presents it, I don't know. He's probably a good bloke. Can't tell because you don't know him, do you? You probably think I'm alright, but I'm not. Yeah, I'm I'm sure this this German line seems just a bit prettier than most of the other ones. Maybe it's because it's sunshine. A lot of the scenarios I've done have, have been quite, quite poor weather. But I do like the lighting in this game. It's it's like farming simulator. You know, the up any any open world game, you've got to get the lighting just right, aren't you? Otherwise, it doesn't look real. Lighting and weather effects. Got to get them right, aren't you? Otherwise, uh, it's not good. 
I still think I've said it before, Witcher 3 is probably the, the nicest looking game. It's just really nice looking, stupidly nice. I sit watching sunsets and stuff like that in it. Mind you, I've done that in Farming Simulator. I do like the sound this this train makes. The the horn's terrible, but the it just sounds like a spaceship, doesn't it? It all looks clean, doesn't it? I, I don't know what it is, and it's very bright in this cabin. I guess it's the blue sky and all that. It just makes you feel better, doesn't it? And we're going into an underground bit now. I do put my headlights on eventually. It's looking a bit dark, isn't it? See, at this stage, I'm not. I don't know if I'm going through a tunnel or if I'm going into an underground system. And it's it's fairly apparent now that I'm going into like an underground area. You do come out again, but I don't know if you've noticed that XP is racking up, isn't it? Pretty quick. Only about 20 minutes and it's about 45 minutes in total this one. So we're about halfway through and I've already got 9,000 XP. And now it's 10,000. I'm not sure that I like these busier ones as much. Although I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I, I did kind of enjoy this I guess. Because I, like I like the way that the... The train actually drives, you know, the braking of it's a lot, a lot, a lot simpler. It's really sort of clinical in here, isn't it? I didn't get out either, because I, I, you can see, uh, you can see how quick passengers are loading, and I'm already behind schedule. It's merciless. You don't get much. Oh, I told you. You don't get much time. You're pretty busy. I suppose that's a good thing, isn't it, really? You don't want to sit there bored. I had to go in the... I didn't... I don't think I recorded it. The the fast... The fast British one, I can't remember what it's called. And... Uh, Christmas closures, I think the scenario were called there. They finally put my headlights on. Uh, and uh, basically, I blew into Ealing Broadway at about 100 mile an hour. <laughs> so that was the end of that. I got the braking completely wrong. I was seeing how fast the train could go. I think I got it up to 160. And then, uh, well, that didn't sound good, did it? I got I got a cup of tea brought to me. You won't have heard it because I stopped recording. But it's it's red hot. I'm having difficult getting the tea that I want. I, I like green tea with lemon, and you know this isn't going to be very interesting, but I'm going to say it anyway. And uh, I don't know, probably about September, I've been buying PG green tea with lemon because that's my favourite one. It tastes like a lemon sip. Uh, if you're American, I can't even describe that to you. Uh, it'd be like lemon, lemon sweets, lemon candies. I, I guess it just tasted really nice, and uh, I've enjoyed it. I've been getting it for for ages now, years, and, uh, and all of a sudden you just can't get it anymore. They've just seem to have stopped making it. So I had to go on my fallback ones, which were Clipper, but they're really hard to get. Uh, so I'm quite disappointed because I, when I stopped smoking well, I stopped smoking three or four years ago now but I continued on one of them vaping things if you do smoke and you want to stop them vaping things are the way to go and I went down to zero nicotine but I used to love coffee I noticed I said used to uh, and I was a proper coffee drinking not not when I say proper coffee drinking, that was my exclusive drink, basically. But I'd have it really strong. 
I did I did I did actually stop that at one time just after I'd been to the States and and then I found that I didn't like their coffee you know because I I just liked what I liked you know like you know when you're a kid and you you say you would like I don't know I think of a band that everyone's gonna know <laughs> I can't think of one just I, I don't know Led Zeppelin or everyone's heard of them aren't they or I should think they have or steps, <laughs> bad example. But you know what you like when you're a kid. You just oh no, if it if it's not Led Zeppelin or it's not Thin Lizzy or it's not Muse, I'm not gonna like it. I just don't want to listen to it. I've got no time for it. It's like that Blues Brothers film. I like all kinds of music, country and western. <laughs> that was quite funny. In its day, it's not aged very well. That film though. Uh, well, I was talking about tea, wasn't I? And I stopped drinking coffee because I couldn't, you know, like a kid, I'm not drinking that crap when I'm in America. This American coffee, everything else in America was fantastic. Coffee was just awful. and But it was free a lot of the time, which you don't get in this country. Techno, you know, cafe, they like this cafe culture in the country, but we're just not having it, are we? We don't like it. Plus, they don't like they don't like you actually sitting in the cafe, do they? They want rid of you. They want they want a load of money for a, a, a cup of dishwater <laughs> in an extremely small cup, and then get out of my cafe. I've had my money off you. Go on, get out. Go on, get you. The other people want to sit down there and get ripped off. Anyway, I've gone off on a tangent again. Long story short, when I when I came back from the states, because I'd gone two weeks without my coffee that I'd loved, you know, etc. How I liked it to be made, because I'd gone like that, I thought, oh, I'll go on decaf now. Anyway, that was a big mistake. Within, within two weeks of having to come on from work every day, I've never had an headache in my life up to that point. Anyway, I started getting migraines every afternoon at 2.30. I mean, bad enough to put me in bed. And I, I was absolutely no good for nothing. <laughs> oh, and anyway, it turned out it was coffee. You know, or rather withdrawal symptoms from coffee. So anyway, after that I went on green tea. And then I went back to coffee every now and then. But I admit a particular a particular sort of Nescafe. This is got this story's going on a lot, isn't it? Uh this particular brand of coffee I had Nescafe Al Rica and I loved it, but you know, me being me, three spoons, four spoons of coffee, four spoons of sugar and hardly any water, you know. So it was really nice and I enjoyed it and I especially enjoyed it while I was smoking. Anyway, when I went onto the vaping thing, still enjoyed it with that. And I went down to zero nicotine and all of a sudden coffee started making me feel sick. Which isn't really surprising when you consider how strong I were having it. And when as soon as I stopped smoking, I stopped the vaping thing and the hardest thing about that was not not puffing on the blooming thing, you know, not having it in my mouth. It was like a kid with a dummy. Or a pacifier if you're American. You know, and having it in your hands all the time. They used to roll my own cigarettes. And and part of a lot of that's actually rolling them. You know, not just smoking them, rolling them. But you've always got to have all your stuff with you. And that just becomes its own problem in itself. And getting liberated from not having to carry, like, spare this, spare rolling papers, spare tobacco, spare filters, spare lighters at least three spare lighters because if you if you run dry on any one of the things you can't smoke can you and you know if you're an addict which obviously was you, you always have backups here backups here backups so it's almost like a sack full of stuff you've got to have just have a mind you i did smoke a lot I smoked hell of a lot anyway as soon as i stopped on this uh this vaping thing i, I, I suddenly just couldn't stomach coffee anymore just couldn't stomach it so I went on to salt instead, which gave me heartburn, and I've just stopped, <laughs> just stopped having salt and everything now, and uh, and heartburn has literally gone overnight. So what? We're going back to salt again. Just wonder I didn't do myself in. Ooh, oh, I knocked the cup again. I be, me, me, my wife's been out at shops and got me some because you know, I can't get the PG green tea with lemon so this is Twining's green tea with lemon and it, it, it tastes like Twining's green tea with banana and I don't like bananas 
and that thud was me putting the cup down on the uh, table in disgust it goes straight through the base of the microphone if you have to go to a lot of trouble to, to do this i've got my laptop raised up on blooming towels and that so it doesn't vibrate through desk into the microphone i've got curtains drawn i've got all sorts of stuff to dampen the sound this microphone sat on polystyrene i've got a pop filter on it that stops you blowing into it and i've only i'm only just getting to grip with that as well because i was I had it too close to the microphone up until doing the uh, commentary on the big freight train i did like that big freight train but here we're still underground in this That'd be a bit, uh, a bit mesmerising after a while. When when my kids were younger, I got them. Um, we we had, we've always had Xboxes and stuff like that and Playstations, multiple ones of them. We used to connect our Xboxes up with like a LAN cable, you know, the the original Xbox and play Halo multiplayer. So I got the, I got my kids and my nephews who were the same, just a little bit younger than my kids over here. And we all had tellies and Xboxes and we connected them all up when we used to play Halo. Uh, my son's a bit of a poor loser. Like he's the one that threw the Monopoly board in the air and things like that. Because I tend to win at Monopoly. Well, I have to lately. I would really, I have to be really proud of myself why I always win at Monopoly anyway. Lately, we have, we have, uh, we have these like games nights because my kids have my kids have grown up and moved out. Luckily, they went when they were really young. Otherwise, I could never afford it all this camera gear and all that lot, and a, and a nice a nice car. <laughs> yeah, kids have gone by a Porsche. <laughs> anyway, it's been great with them being gone. I loved having kids, but when they were gone, me, me and my missus got us as as life back. So uh, we yeah. Uh, I, I also started believing in God and stuff like that. I say stuff like that, believing in God. Uh, I won't go into that moment. I might, I might do one day, but, you know, I'm sure you're not here to, to listen to me sermonising you about that. But as a result, we get together as a family quite a lot. Uh, and I've got grandkids as well. Uh, so we we have game nights and stuff. And we've had, we've had games of Scrabble and all kinds of stuff, you know, like... I think it's pitching rebel. I mean, what's that one where you put the pieces of pie in? See that stop? That was a good stop. Uh, Trivial Pursuit, Scrabble, Monopoly, Domino, even Dominoes. And I was, you know, me being me, I like to, I like to always win. I, I'm a, I'm a poor loser. I'll admit. I don't like losing. I never have. But I can usually grin and bear it. I don't usually throw my teddy in corner. My, my son throws his teddy in corner. And starts proper sulking. Well, it it it's grown up now, <laughs> a bit. Well, as grown up as blokes get, you know, this is the guy just at my age playing Train Simulator. You know what I mean? And making YouTube videos that probably hardly anyone's gonna watch because I'm I'm not I'm actually not bothered that uh, I just like doing it. I don't do it for the views, otherwise I'd be doing more popular things, wouldn't I? Just had a drink of tea, I hope you couldn't hear that. I'm going to put my cup down again so it's going to thud. Uh, yeah, it does taste like bananas. Anyway, recently, I say recently, in past, strangely since I've started believing in God, every time we have these game nights and stuff, my missus, who never used to win anything, is now totally dominating. Ooh, <laughs> that sounded bad, didn't it? Well, it's not that bad. Uh, yeah, you got to be careful what you say, haven't you? Yeah, so I just basically keep getting my ass kicked <laughs> at everything. I don't think I've won anything. I haven't won Scrabble. Oh, I might have won some. I might have won Dominoes just at Christmas gone. But but that would just. I'm no good at Dominoes. I'm a bit dyslexic, and and Dominoes just they're, they're them sort of things that just do not suit me. 
you know, because of pattern recognition and stuff like that. My talents lie elsewhere. <laughs> and it in bit of blabbermouth comes to mind. And blabbermouth, so loser, an addictive personality. That's a good combination, isn't it? We've got a full head of steam here. Look at the speed of that now, 71 mile an hour. Not even up to the speed limit. Yeah, it does. It does have a nice sound. This train, but the the blooming horn is terrible, isn't it? I'm just letting you listen. Yeah, look at that fifteen fifteen thousand XP. This might be near end actually, looking at the time. Look at this braking. But this train is so much easier to, to use than them other ones. Th this seems like, it does seem like Star Trek Enterprise compared to the other trains I've been driving. You can get manuals for this game as well. Oh, I overshot that a little bit, didn't I? I, I, I realised you can get manuals for this. You can get PDFs uh, for each individual, I think each individual train. If you if you put into Google, uh, Train Simulator World M7, I think it just comes, it'll probably one of the first things that's gonna come up is the PDF for it. And I think it's even in different languages. She actually come out of the uh, got out of the train this time, but you, you see, you don't get much time, do you? The old German efficiency in it. I don't think I'm far off the end of this. I'm sure I'm not, because I think the scenario is only supposed to be 45 minutes long, and I'm already getting on to 40 minutes. I think 39, 40 minutes. Oh, mind you, I did my intro, didn't I? Well, it won't be that far short. I can't read what it says. Stop at location. Oh yeah, I'm letting brakes off now, aren't I? See, I've got the hang of how to get it going. You see, when when I did it previously, I'd be I'd get I'd be playing it, and then all of a sudden I couldn't get the train to move. So I just saved it or quit it or whatever, and, you know, because I thought it was a bug. So it's easy to, you know, if someone's not working, I think it's sure the first thing you, you go to excuse is there's something wrong with the game, isn't it? <laughs> it's not working. It's got to be a bug. But you see, the reason why I thought it was a bug is because I'd managed to pull away sort of two or three times from a station, and then I got to one, and I couldn't, for the life of me, get the train to move, no matter what I pressed, including the handbrake release and stuff like that. Handbrake, parking brake. Yeah. Now what am I doing? Oh yeah, you've got to just park it up. You park it up and you get out and it's end of scenario. I'm thinking about maybe just attaching the patch notes to end of this this video, but I won't I won't write it on there, it's just in case you want to look at them because I've mentioned it and it's irritating when you do that in it I suppose yeah I think I think I'll do that it won't, it won't take long I won't talk over it I'll just leave it so you can you can see it see I get some green uh, green green ticks and red crosses tight schedule you, you got to be on your toes on that one but I think that where uh, I overshot and had to reverse, that that killed it for me. Uh, I wonder why it's saying 9,000 total rather than the 15,000 that I ended with. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. I'm, I'm just going to leave you to read this. It's just a 
capture of the update for the console and the PC one as well. I go to the PC one just in case anyone's watching. I'm not going to put this in the description. Uh, I'll, I'll make a few more of these, I guess. But, uh, I did the brake test and I've done the heavy all thing. Not heavy all. Anyway, the brake test was interesting. I'll uh, I'll say bye.